So what happens if we lift this bowling ball up in the air? Well, we know it's going to gain energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. However, if we drop this ball, we know it's immediately going to want to fall to a lower level. Why? Well, whenever an object falls to a lower level, it goes to a lower energy state. It has less energy in the form of gravitational potential energy, so it goes to a lower energy state. And that's true for any object that has mass. So what would happen if we take this bowling ball and we drop it into this liquid? Well, again, this bowling ball has mass, so it's going to want to fall to a lower level. However, what happens if this bowling ball falls into this lower level? Well, we know it has volume. So therefore, if it falls into this liquid, it's going to lift up this liquid. It has volume, so if it falls, it's going to displace a certain volume of liquid, and that liquid is going to therefore lift up. So therefore, even though this ball falls down and goes to a lower level, some water would have to be lifted up. So this is actually a problem because there is a battle. There's, there's a battle between two forces. For example, one force is this bowling ball. It has mass. So because it has mass, it wants to fall to a lower level. However, when this bowling ball falls to this lower level, it's going to lift up water. But realize this water that's been lifted, this water also has mass. So therefore, this water also wants to drop to a lower level. However, if this water falls and drops to a lower level, it's going to lift up the bowling ball. But remember, the bowling ball also wants to fall and drop to a lower level. So we have a battle between this bowling ball wanting to fall and this water wanting to fall. So again, all objects with mass want to fall to a lower level. This bowling ball has mass, so it wants to fall to a lower level. But this displaced water also has mass, so it also wants to fall to a lower level. So if we were to characterize these forces, we know this bowling ball has a mass, so therefore it has a weight. It has a weight that applies a force pushing this bowling ball downward due to its mass, due to its weight. But this displaced water also has a mass, so it also has a weight. So it also feels a force wanting to go downward. And when this, bowling, when, when this displaced water applies that force going downward, it's going to lift this bowling ball upward. So this force that's lifting this bowling ball upward is called the buoyant force. So where does this buoyant force come from? Well, again, it comes from this water wanting to fall down. And as this water falls down, it lifts this bowling ball upward. It applies that buoyant force. So if we were going to analyze the forces that this bowling ball feels, we would see it feels two forces. It feels a force downward due to its mass. And again, all objects with mass have a weight. So, so they feel that force downward. So clearly this bowling ball has mass, so therefore it has a weight. So this bowling ball is feeling a force downward. But it's also feeling a buoyant force upward. Because again, this water falling down, as it falls down, it lifts this bowling ball upward. So therefore, if we drew a free body diagram for this bowling ball, we see it's feeling two forces due to its weight going downward and due to the buoyant force going upward. So let's analyze these two forces that this bowling ball is feeling. So of course it's feeling a force due to its weight. So how do we quantify that weight? Well, we know force equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So therefore, if we know the mass of this bowling ball and multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity, we can determine the weight of this bowling ball. So let's say this bowling ball has a mass of 10 kilograms. We know the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So therefore, we could determine that this ball is feeling a force of 100 newtons due to its weight. So again, this bowling ball has mass. So of course, it has a weight that's, that it feels a force going downward. And let's say that force is 100 newtons because it's 10 kilograms. So now we know this bowling ball is feeling a force of 100 newtons going downward. But we also know this bowling ball is feeling a buoyant force going upwards. So how do we quantify that buoyant force that this bowling ball is feeling going upward? Well, again, 
What is the source of that buoyant force? Again, it's this displaced water wanting to go downwards. And because this displaced water has mass, it also has a weight. So this displaced water feels a force going downward. And as it feels this force going downward, it lifts the bowling ball upward. So therefore, the force due to the weight of this displaced water equals this buoyant force, because that's the source of this buoyant force. So therefore, we can determine the weight of this displaced water, we can determine the force that this water feels downward, and therefore we can determine the buoyant force this bowling ball is feeling upward. So we need to determine the mass of this displaced water. However, something important to realize is in physics, whenever we're doing fluid mechanic problems, it's very difficult to deal with masses of water. It's very difficult to isolate this specific amount of water and to weigh it. So a trick that physicists use is we know that density equals mass divided by volume. Simple equation. So if we multiply both sides by volume, we're left with mass equals density times volume. And, and so this is a very simple equation. So therefore, it may be difficult to determine the mass of this water. However, it's very easy to determine the density of water. We just look in any old physics textbook and it's very easy to determine the volume of this displaced water. So therefore, if we can determine the density of this water and determine the volume of this displaced water, we can determine the mass of this displaced water. So again, mass times acceleration due to gravity will give you the weight, the weight of this water. But again, it's difficult to determine, again, it's difficult to determine the mass of this displaced water, but it's easy to determine the density of water and the volume of this displaced water. So instead of outright determining the mass, we can just plug in the density times volume instead of mass. Because if we take the density of the water and the volume of the water, that will give us the mass of this displaced water. So we would look in any textbook and see the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meters cubed. And we would just take out a measuring stick and we would see that the volume of this displaced water is 0 0.001 meters cubed. That's this particular volume. So therefore, if we know the volume of this displaced fluid, and we know the density of this displaced fluid, multiply the density by volume, and that gives us mass. And multiply mass by gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, and that will give us the weight of this displaced water. So plugging in those values, we would see the weight of this displaced water is 10 newtons. So therefore, if this displaced water has a weight of 10 newtons, it's applying a force of 10 newtons downwards. And as it applies that 10 newton force downward, it lifts up this bowling ball. So therefore, we know the buoyant force that this bowling ball is feeling is 10 newtons. This bowling ball feels a force of 10 newtons upwards. So now focusing on the free body diagram of this bowling ball, we see it has a force due to the weight of this bowling ball. So it feels a force downward due to its weight. And we already quantify that weight as 100 newtons. And we explain how this bowling ball is feeling a buoyant force of 10 newtons going upward. So the bowling ball feels a force of 10 newtons going upward. So focusing on the free body diagram of this bowling ball, we see it's feeling these two forces, 100 newtons downward and 10 newtons upward. So what's going to happen? Well, clearly, this weight of the bowling ball is greater than the weight of this displaced water and therefore this buoyant force. So therefore, this force wins. The weight of this bowling ball wins. It's a stronger force. So therefore, this bowling ball is going to win. So therefore, it's going to go to a lower energy state. It's going to go to a lower level and it, it wins. And this water has to deal with it. So this water essentially stays upward. It stays in this higher energy state. So therefore, this bowling ball is going to sink to the ground. So remember, the key idea is that this bowling ball has mass. So because it has mass, it has a weight. So it feels a force going downward. But this displaced water also has mass. So it also has a weight and feels a force going downward. So we can characterize these two forces 
using this mass times acceleration due to gravity. The mass of this bowling ball times acceleration due to gravity tells us the force this bowling ball feels downward. The mass of this displaced water times acceleration due to gravity tells us about the force that this water feels downward. And we can compare these two forces, and whichever force is greater wins. But remember, rather than dealing with mass, we can deal with density times volume because density times volume is mass. So if we know the density of this bowling ball and multiplied by the volume of this bowling ball, we know the mass of this bowling ball. And if we know the density of this water multiplied by the volume of this water, we know the mass of this water. So this is another way we can compare these two forces. And something important to realize is if this bowling ball has a volume of 0.001 meters cubed, Therefore, if this bowling ball were to drop, if it has a volume of 0.001 meters cubed, then therefore it would displace exactly 0.001 meters cubed of water. And logically that makes sense. Hopefully that's straightforward. This, whatever the volume of this bowling ball is, that's the volume of water that's going to be displaced and lift upwards. So what's important to realize is this volume of this bowling ball equals the volume of the displaced water. So both of these volume terms are the same, and we know the acceleration due to gravity is the same. So therefore, the only thing that differs when it comes to the force, these two forces are these density terms. So remember, this equation tells us about the force that this bowling ball feels downward, and this equation tells us the force that this water feels downward. They both have the same volume. They both have the same acceleration due to gravity. The only difference is the density. So therefore, it's the density that determines which of these two forces wins. Whichever term has the greater density wins. And because this bowling ball has a greater density, it's going to feel a greater force going downwards. And that's why the bowling ball wins. And that's why the bowling ball is going to fall and, and displace this water and lift this water upward. So we have already explained how there are two forces battling one another. We know this bowling ball has mass, so therefore it has a weight, and it wants to fall to a lower level. However, this displaced water also has mass, so it also has weight and also wants to fall to a lower level. So another way of looking at this is realizing if we lift this 10 kilogram bowling ball up one meter, it's going to gain energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. And we can calculate how much energy it would gain in the form of gravitational potential energy. And we would see if we lift up a 10 kilogram bowling ball up one meter, it would gain 100 joules of energy. However, if this bowling ball were to drop, we know it would lift up water. And we already explained how we would lift up one kilogram of water. So if we lift up this one kilogram of water up one meter, it would also gain energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. And if we did that calculation, we would see it would gain 10 joules of energy. So we have these two forces battling one another because we know if this bowling ball drops, if this bowling ball drops one meter, it would go to a lower gravitational potential energy state. However, if this water dropped to a lower level, it would also fall to a lower gravitational potential energy state. However, we see if this bowling ball dropped, it would drop by 100 joules. So it would go to a much lower gravitational potential energy state. However, if this water dropped, it would only drop by 10 joules. It would go from 10 joules to zero joules. So therefore, we can see it's very energetically favorable for this bowling ball to drop. That's very energetically favorable. However, it's not so energetically favorable for this water to drop. So therefore, the bowling ball is going to win. So even though when this bowling ball drops, it's going to lift up this water. So this water is going to gain energy, and that's not energetically favorable. However, the magnitude of how energetically favorable it is for the bowling ball to drop is greater than the magnitude of how much energy is gained by the water. So the point is the bowling ball is happy, it gets to go to a lower level. The water is not happy, it gains energy, it goes to a higher level. But this is so energetically favorable that on balance, it's more energetically favorable for the bowling ball to drop and to lift up the water. Overall, that's on balance, that's more energetically favorable. So that's another way of looking at this, comparing the gravitational potential energy of these two objects with masses falling.